Shalom, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat. And today we're going to be having a deeper look at the Feast of Dedication. Hanukkah, Hebrew meaning dedication, also known as the Feast of Dedication or the Feast of Lights. It is an eight-day feast commemorating the rededication of the Temple in Jerusalem after its destruction by Antiochus in the 2nd century BC. Hanukkah commemorates the miracle of the one-day supply of consecrated oil to light the Temple, menorah lasting eight days, the time required to prepare a fresh supply of oil. And this is why the rabbis use a nine-stick menorah. This is not biblical to use a nine-stick menorah. We use the biblical menorah, which is the seven lampstand, representing Yeshua as the light of the world. But the rabbis did not have the understanding of the Messiah, did not have the understanding of the light of the world, and therefore they invented a nine-stick menorah, which is not biblical. Yes, there was a miracle in Hanukkah that took place. It was a foreshadow of Yeshua the Messiah, the light of the world, the perfect seventh lampstand menorah. Hanukkah means dedication. So many people say, we don't see Hanukkah in the Bible. It's all over the Bible. You just need to know that it means to dedicate, dedicate the temple. Everything that was will happen again. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10, the Bible says that God declares the end from the beginning. Ecclesiastic 1, verse 9, what has been done will be done again. Nothing is new under the sun. The Bible says that they rededicated the temple. We are the temple of God. We need to dedicate our lives to Yeshua the Messiah. Everything that was will happen again. Everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. We know that Enoch in the Old Testament dedicated his life to God. He walked faithfully with God and he was taken away. He was raptured because he dedicated himself. And in fact, the word Enoch in Hebrew comes from the root word Hanukkah, which is to dedicate. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter 5, verse 24, Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. So the very name of Enoch means to dedicate. And Enoch dedicated himself to God and God took him away. What It's a picture that you and I, when we prepare ourselves for Yeshua's second coming, we too will be taken away to meet the Lord in the air and go home. As we dedicate our life to Yeshua the Messiah, as we prepare ourselves for his second coming as the bride of Yeshua the Messiah. We know that the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah, is celebrated for eight days, but we see the picture of the new heavens, the new earth, the dedication to those who dedicate themselves to God will be the new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. What is the core principle of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication? Well, first of all, it's the number eight. It's eight days long. Eight in the Bible, eight in the Hebrew, is the word shmone. Shmone means plumpness. That's where the Hebrew word shaman, plentiness, comes from. It meaning to superabound. It also has to do with regeneration. In Revelation, we have the new heavens and the new earth. We have new beginnings. Let's go back to about 1500 BC. We're going to start at the time of Moses. We're going to see the deep spiritual meaning of the number eight. Regeneration, rededication, new beginnings. Exodus 22, verse 30. Do the same with your cattle and your sheep. Let them stay with their mothers for seven days, but give them to me on the eighth day. So we see that the eighth day represents dedication. The Lord says, give them to me on the eighth day. The concept of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, to dedicate ourselves to the Lord is all over the Bible. The word to dedicate in Hebrew is the word Hanukkah. And Hanukkah is also the eighth letter. And in Hebrew, the eighth letter is to dedicate. It's also how we pronounce life in Hebrew, with the letter Chet, Chet Chanukah. Chaim means life. Numbers chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to pass that on the day Moses anointed and sanctified the tabernacle on the eighth day. Let's have a look at Numbers chapter 7, verse 88. Total number of the animals for the sacrifice of the fellowship offering came to 24 oxen, 60 rams, 60 male goats, and 60 male lambs a year old. These were the offerings for the dedication of the altar after it was anointed. So we see right there the altar, the Hanukkah, the temple. That's what it says in Hebrew for the dedication for the Hanukkah 
of the altar it was anointed. We see that the feast of the word dedication to Hanukkah is all over the Bible. So no one knows it's in the Bible. But if you read it and you understand that Hanukkah means to dedicate, then you begin to understand that it's very biblical. Let's have a look at Leviticus chapter 9 verse 1. And on the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and all the elders of Israel. Again, we see the eighth day, Hanukkah, dedication, the rededication of the temple. We are the temple of God. Eight is new beginnings. Eight is when you give to the Lord. It's all over the written word of God. And that's the true meaning of Hanukkah. The religious leaders, the Pharisees, they just look at the shallow meaning of the eighth day. They don't see this because they don't have the Holy Spirit. How many of us know who Jesse is? Jesse was the father of King David. We see in Matthew 1 verse 6 that Jesse was the father of King David. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 10 that he had seven sons. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So who did he choose? He chose King David. King David was the eighth son. King David represents Messiah Yeshua because from the branch of King David will come Messiah Yeshua and he was the eighth son. We see this concept all over the written word of God. Let's have a look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on his ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. So we see there were eight, a preacher of righteousness and seven others. Once again, we see dedication. He dedicated himself to the Lord. He was righteous in the Lord's eyes. He was number eight. There was the flood, then there was new beginnings. It's the concept all through the Bible. As we said before, everything that was will happen again. It's all a shadow. It is the biblical pattern with the number eight. And it ties in direct with dedication, Hanukkah. King Solomon dedicates the temple. In Hebrew, it says he Hanukkah, the temple. Let's have a look at how King Solomon dedicates the temple, how he Hanukkahs the temple on the eighth day in Hanukkah. And that would be 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 8. And at that time, Solomon kept the feast for seven days and all Israel with him, a very great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. And on the eighth day, he held a sacred assembly for they observed the dedication of the altar for seven days and the feast for seven days. So we see that on the eighth day, he Hanukkah the temple. It's all over the written word of God. And that is a true meaning of the feast of dedication. That is a true meaning to Hanukkah the altar, the Hanukkah, the temple, to dedicate ourselves. We see this with Enoch. We see this with Noah. We see this concept of the Feast of Dedication of Hanukkah all over the Bible, and it all points to Yeshua HaMashiach. Moses dedicated the temple. He anointed the priests on the eighth day. He Hanukkahed them. Now we can begin to understand why Yeshua, Jesus, walked in to Solomon's temple, on Solomon's porch, on the Feast of Dedication. Why he proclaimed himself to be the light of the world. We see that Yeshua celebrated the Feast of Dedication. We begin to have a deeper look at why Yeshua called himself the light of the world. In the book of Exodus, chapter 25, verse 31, you are to make a menorah of pure gold. So we see that Moses was instructed to put a menorah in the tabernacle in order to give light. It was a foreshadow of Yeshua, the light of the world, the perfect menorah. As we said, everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. Ecclesiastics 1.9, everything that was will happen again. This is the pattern of the Bible. So when we begin to study the Bible under the biblical Hebrew foundation, under the way that Yeshua taught it, under the way that Yeshua is the written word of God, we begin to see all these pictures, the nations grafted into the olive tree, into the menorah, into the light of the world, Yeshua HaMashiach, and we become the one new man. Ephesians 2.15. We dedicate our life to Yeshua HaMashiach. We walk with him and we get taken away just like Enoch does. And Enoch means to dedicate to Hanukkah. Very important to see that the menorah, the lampstand, the golden lampstand, has seven lampstands. Seven is the number of perfection. Seven is the number of God. It is the perfect light in the tabernacle. The menorah is the tree of life. Without that menorah, the temple would have been totally dark. Yeshua 
is the light of our temple. Jeremiah chapter 11 calls Israel the olive tree that is to be the light to the world. Romans 11 verse 17 But if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive were grafted in among them, and became a partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree. This is the beautiful picture of the Feast of Dedication, the Feast of Hanukkah. Exodus 13, verse 21, the pillar of fire, the Shekinah glory. How do we celebrate the Feast of Dedication as New Covenant believers? And what did Yeshua mean when he walked into Solomon's porch and proclaimed himself as the Messiah, as the light of the world? Yeshua the Messiah celebrated the Feast of Dedication Hanukkah. We turn our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 10, verses 22 and 23. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus, Yeshua, was walking in the temple courts in Solomon's colonnade. And this is exactly where the Pharisees, the religious leaders, confronted Yeshua and asked him, Are you the Messiah? 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Whoever claims to live in him must live a life as Yeshua did. The Bible says that everything that Yeshua did, he set it as an example for us. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 15, I have set you an example so that you should do as I have done for you. So first of all, we see that everything that's in the Bible that Yeshua did in his three and a half year ministry is an example for us. So if Yeshua celebrated the Feast of Dedication and the Bible says that everything he did is an example for us, then we need to celebrate the Feast of Dedication as followers of Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua the Messiah in the Feast of Dedication in the temple, in the book of John chapter 8 verse 12 said, Yeshua spoke again to the people. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. And if Yeshua said, I'm the light of the world, and the Bible says that everything he did is an example for us, we can begin to understand the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14, where it says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Now with this understanding, we can begin to look at the Feast of Dedication, which is the Feast of Hanukkah. But first of all, we need to understand one of the reasons that the Pharisees confronted Yeshua when he was walking on Solomon's porch and asked him, are you the Messiah? This is the reason. They know what the Bible says. And the Bible says that the glory of the Lord departed from the temple eastward. Eastward is the Mount of Olives. And they're waiting for that glory to return to the temple. And that's why they ask Yeshua if he's the Messiah. The book of Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 18 then the glory of the Lord departed from over the threshold of the temple and stopped above the cherubim. That is pointing eastward. And this is the reason the Pharisees were asked him, are you the Messiah? Because they know what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 43, verse 2, And I saw the glory of God of Israel coming from the east. His voice was like a roar of rushing waters, and the land was radiant with his glory. This is the reason in the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah, the Pharisees confronted Yeshua and asked him, are you the Messiah? Because they're waiting for that glory to return from the East. And we know as New Covenant believers that Yeshua is coming back and his feet will land on the Mount of Olives, which is eastward from the temple. The difference is those Pharisees who did not have the Holy Spirit didn't know that the Messiah is right there with them. The glory is right there in the temple. We as New Covenant believers are waiting for Yeshua to return and to bring his glory and to come back as the lion of the tribe of Judah with fire in his eyes to take back everything the enemy has stolen. So how do we celebrate the Feast of Dedication? Well, the word dedication means to dedicate. So we need to dedicate our life to Yeshua the Messiah, to be followers of Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua the Messiah in the Feast of Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, proclaimed himself to be the light of the world. We are to be the light of the world. And that's how you celebrate the festival of Hanukkah, by being a light to the nations in this dark time. We don't follow rabbinic traditions. We don't uh, follow historians. We follow only the written word of God. And the written word of God says that Yeshua is the light of the world. The written word of God says that we are to be the light of the world. And that's how we celebrate Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, by dedicating our life to be followers of Yeshua the Messiah.
I'm going to pray right now in Hebrew over you and your loved ones. Number 6, verses 24 to 26, the Aramaic blessing. One thing I want to bring out in the Hebrew text, this is a signal of blessing from God, meaning God is coming to each one of you one by one and blessing you. The one that's praying this blessing is just a mediator. The blessing is coming from the heavens. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The peace of Yeshua HaMashiach. Messianic Rabbi Zev Porad, Shalom from Israel. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. And together we will unmask the Chaldean spirit. Straight from the land of Israel and right out of the heart of Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat comes Zev's brand new book, Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. The subtitle reads, A Messianic Rabbi's Stunning Supernatural Journey to Zion and the Life-Changing Treasures He Uncovered Along the Way. It's being described by readers as explosive, deeply moving, an unbelievable journey, a world of perspective and insight. Dr. Tom Horn, CEO of Skywatch TV and an acclaimed best-selling author says, Zev truly pulls back the mask on the predominant spiritual battle of the last days, and he does it by metaphorically taking you by the hand and placing you right in the middle of the Holy Land. His work is scholarly, thought-provoking, and tantalizing. My name is Carl Gallops. I was blessed to write the foreword to Zev's book. I've read every single page of it, and I assure you it's riveting and eye-opening. Let me warn you, though, don't pick it up thinking you'll read just a handful of pages, then put it down. That'll probably be next to impossible for you to do. Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit, available at fine bookstores everywhere and at the major online bookstores as well. Get your copy now.